Feast your eyes, guys, on this creature called a short-peaked echidna. As you can see on his head and belly, he has dark hairs. But when you move to its back, those hairs become spines. Kind of like he has a bleached frosted tip haircut from the 2000s. But this is actually a female. Her name is Licker, she's a rescue, and she lives here at the Walkabout Park Sanctuary, where I'm currently volunteering. And she is a real sweetheart. <laughs> Aside from the platypus, echidnas are the only mammal in the world that lay eggs. Platypuses and echidnas belong to the exclusive mammal egg-laying club called monotremes. In a way, they are the last remaining link between mammals and their egg-laying reptilian ancestors. Echidnas are insectivores. They love snacking on termites, larvae and eggs. And the echidna snout is a marvel of engineering or I should say beak rather, similar to the one that their cousin the platypus has, because it is long and it is rigid. And it is also equipped with electroreceptors, allowing them to detect electrical signals produced by the tiny muscles of ants underground. Their sense of smell and direction is so superior that blind echidnas have been spotted in the wild, surviving just fine. Watch how our snout is probing the log, looking for a snack. Kind of like a spiky metal detector. Her snout is just a tiny little hole, but evolution has gifted this creature a 15 centimeter long sticky worm-like tongue instead. And because the echidna has no teeth, it smashes its victims between its tongue and the roof of its mouth. Nom, 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 nom. And now, what you've all been waiting for, the echidna's d It has four heads. Yeah, you heard me right, a four-headed peepee. Kind of like Fluffy, Hagrid's three-headed dog, plus one head. Well, you get the picture. Literally, here's a picture. Ugh. Scientists are not sure why. Isolate and identify. Oh my god. But when it comes to echidnas, why not? And what about the female echidna, you might think? Well, she, on the contrary, only has one multitasking hole. She uses it for peeing, pooping, and for mating. And that is what we call a cloaca. So, now you know. Fire plays a significant role in the Australian ecosystem. Little superheroes that they are, echidnas don't try to escape a fire. Instead, they bury themselves in the cool, protective soil. They lower their body temperature to only about 11 degrees, slow their breathing, and just chill. This chill state is called torpor. It's kind of like hibernation, but shallower and shorter. They can do this for days and even weeks, waiting for the flames to blow over. And because echidnas can't sweat, they have evolved another unique strategy to lower their body temperature and to keep their hypersensitive snout humid. They blow tiny snot bubbles. But don't let the echidnas' beady eyes and snot bubbling abilities fool you. The short-beaked echidna has the largest prefrontal cortex relative to body size of any mammal. In other words, this spiky little weirdo is surprisingly clever. But if you think the short-beaked echidna is wild, just take a look at her three long-beaked cousins, the eastern, the western, and the Attenborough's long-beaked echidna. A species so rare that it was caught alive on camera for the first time in 2023, in this trail cam footage. And yes, that last one is named after naturalist Sir Dave Attenborough, because he deserves it. This could have ow. These guys are even freakier with long snouts, fewer spines, and with some being three times larger than their short beaked relatives. These freaks of nature live in the notoriously impenetrable mountainous regions of New Guinea and nearby islands and are rarely spotted. Bloody hell, that's a long beaked echidna. Unfortunately, they are also critically endangered due to deforestation and overhunting. And it is a dream of mine to one day travel to the rainforest of Papua and to present and protect the mysteries that lurk inside it before it's too late. Echidnas are not the most elegant animals. <laughs> How would you walk if your feet face backwards? But their paws are like shovels on steroids. Seriously, I am blown away by how strong this little lady is. This super mammalian strength allows these creatures to rip into tough termite mounds when hungry. 
or when threatened, the echidna at an extraordinary speed will dig the lower part of its body underground, which for the Aussie predators like dingoes and raptors contains the tasty bits, only leaving her spiky back sticking out like a biological landmine. Turns out not even humans are echidna spine proof. Oh. As you can see by the sweet spine kisses that Licker left me as a souvenir. Is that an echidna in a tree? What the hell? Turns out that echidnas use their powerful stubby legs and claws to climb rocks, trees, conquer mountains, oh my God. scale walls, and even fences. It cannot climb up there. And they can swim too, using their snout as a little snorkel. How cute is that? Now, let's talk about the echidna's love life for a second, which is unconventional. In a behavior known as trailing, up to 10 really horny males will form a love train behind the female because of a irresistible love hormone that she releases. We call this an echidna train. So the idea behind this is, is that the female figures that the last male standing after a couple of weeks is probably the most persistent and strongest one. He's the one deserving of the lucky prize if you catch my train. So, after the last male standing in the love train has put his tetra-tentacle baby maker to work, the female will lay a single leathery egg, typically once a year. About the size of a grape, she deposits the egg into her pouch, yes, pouch, like a kangaroo. After 10 days, the still undeveloped baby emerges from the egg. And while she lays eggs like a reptile, she produces milk like a mammal. Well, sort of. She has milk areole, specialized patches of skin that ooze milk. Oh. Because nipples would have been just too simple for an echidna. This little creature called a puggle, no, the other puggle, ah, stays in its mother's pouch, slurping up the milkshake that mama sweats out. Literally, just take a look how you have to give a baby echidna its bottle. It's ridiculous. After two months, tiny spines begin to develop, irritating the mother's pouch. So the puggle gets evicted. <laughs> Did I mention that echidnas might glow in the dark under UV light? Well, I've been told this by Tessin Barnard, founder of the Walkabout Park Sanctuary. To be honest, I haven't found any information about glowy echidnas. No scientific proof, no photos or videos. So let's head out tonight with an ultraviolet light and see for ourselves. All right, guys, I'm here in the echidna enclosure at the Walkabout Park Sanctuary. And let's turn the flashlight off and turn the UV light on. Okay, so it's not easy to tell, but to me, it definitely looks like they're glowing. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Wow, that is so crazy. This phenomenon is called biofluorescence, and it has been reported in other animals, mostly fish and invertebrates. The discovery that some mammals biofluoresce has only been made recently and is still largely unresearched. The purpose of mammal biofluorescence remains a mystery to science. One thing is for sure, it's pretty fucking awesome. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. So together we can uncover the many more mysteries that mother nature holds. From rare and undiscovered creatures, extraordinary superpowers and even the occasional unconventional dick. <laughs>